Hi, welcome to the new Technical One level. Uh, we have been revising our material and we have chosen new pieces to work with our students at the Escola de Música de Brasília and you are welcome to enjoy also this material for free. The Wood So Wild is a Renaissance piece. Our, this arrangement was made by Jeffrey McFaley for the guitar. It uses our scordatura. Scordatura is the technical term for any uh, tuning that is not the traditional one. There are two very famous scordaturas on the guitar repertoire. Uh, one is the one that we see here, the third in F sharp. And other scordatura that is very common and you are going to see later is the sixth string on D. The scordatura used here, third on F sharp, was chosen because uh, by doing so the guitar has the very same tuning as the viola, a Renaissance instrument. It also has a tuning that's very similar to one of the Renaissance lutes. There are many forms of the lute, in, including the Renaissance, but I would say the standard Renaissance lute would have a tuning similar to that. However, in the viola or in the lute, especially nowadays, they are built in a smaller size. Both instruments always had different size and according to the difference in size uh, the tuning would differ not uh, the uh, interval between strings but what would be the notes themselves because a larger instrument will have a longer string length therefore it will sound lower with lower notes and a shorter instrument will have also a shorter string length and then it will have a higher pitch so it will reach higher notes so modern lutes modern violas usually are smaller and they are often tuned in G for the lute or A for the viola that's why it's also very common when guitarists play Renaissance pieces, not only they choose uh, this scordatura that make the guitar closer to the tuning of those instruments, but they also add a capo on the third, fourth, or fifth fret, also the second, uh, to have a tuning that is makes it sound makes the guitar sound even more similar to a viola or a lute nowadays okay uh, but you can of course play without couples it's op optional the use of couples for that repertoire therefore because we have this challenge of this quadratura that may lead to some misreadings on the very first beginning i recommend you to start working very slowly just being aware of the fingering. This is what I call pluck. I call not because I invented so. That's how I learned it from my, my previous teachers, Franz Hallas. How does pluck work? You play as if on the frets there were an electric... Uh, electricity was running, running on the frets and when you make the, the string touch the frets, you get an uh, electric shock. And then you release your hand as fast as possible. And then you are back to the, your normal standard position. Then when it's time to play the next note, you first think of the movement, visualize it, and then go at once. Pluck is not Tai Chi Chuan. It's not so you can in slow motion prepare for the next note. No, it is Kung Fu. You are there, uh, uh, almost faking as if you were totally uh, uh, immobile without, without motion. 
uh, and then at once you make that fast and killing movement at once and nobody even saw you that's how pluck works like kung fu like it's a it's a ninja movement it not it's not tai chi chuan okay why it is important to do so for two reasons one is by leaving your hand the more time possible in a, a re relaxed position you will uh, be able to also when playing going back to that relaxation if, if there is any possibility but you are also coming back to some relaxation mode when you are practicing between using relaxation on each movement other important issue is when you start studying movements in slow motion speed them up is very hard but if you practice to make from the very first beginning fast movements no matter how much you wait between each movement but just because you are doing always fast movements uh, shortening this pause between the, those fast movements is easy and then you can play faster easier but speeding up slow motion movements that's so much harder okay it also gives you time to go check if you're playing the right notes also to check if you're playing the right notes i recommend you to sing while playing and if possible singing in a way that allows you to say different things when you are playing a C than when you're playing a C sharp and say C sharp is quite hard so I say the notes in German for you if you're an English speaking uh, person it can be challenging to use this uh, B and the H uh, the, the B and the H uh, but you can you can uh, adapt by using the same logic which is when there is a sharp you add a is so c's g's a's fees g's i's his but okay when it happens but you can adapt and use b's uh, and add is when there is a flat so uh says this is face oh sorry uh says this uh is face guess air i eyes and then you have to this you can adapt okay uh, if you are from a country which say the notes as in Italian, which is my case in, in Brazil, what I do is uh, it's an adap adaptation from the Codali method, which you first have to use different consonants for every note. So, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, because then you have a T on the seventh note and not other note with s and when there is a sharp you change the vowel to u do hu mu fu lu uh, when when is a flat you add the vowel you change the vowel sorry you change the vowel to e de he me and so on okay but as i told you Feel free to use what works best for you. What is important is to say the note names in the easiest possible way, especially making clear the difference of a C from a C sharp, okay? And sing the melody. So when you're starting the melodies, E, 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 Ha, C, Ha, is. It's not, E, G, Z, G, no, this 
This G sharp is not part of the melody. It, this is an accompaniment. So sing only the melody. So E, 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 A, C, S, A, D. Okay? Then what you have to do after that is, which will be much easier, is to say singing out loud the rhythm, the beat. This is a very simple uh, compound binary uh, measure. So if you sing one la li chu la li one la li, it's very easy. One la li chu la li one la ki li chu la li la ki li chu la li one la li chu la li one la li chu la li one la ki li chu la li. Okay. Why is it important to do so? Because you have to have musical information on your mental image. Probably what you have done so far is when practicing a piece and you close your eyes and thinking that you're playing, the only uh, thoughts that come to your mind is what the finger are doing. And you have to include musical information on that. When you close your eyes and think that you're playing something, you must, you must have musical information. Be it form, the melody, the sounds, the note names, the chords, some musical information, man. You must think of music. Because if you don't so, you reach that very common dilemma which after three or four weeks of hard work, you know that it's not enough. You know there's room for improvement, but you have no idea what to do. Why? Because you have only thought of fingerings so far. And probably that will be the time where there, what needs to be improved is the musicality. But without musical information on your brain, you cannot even start. So it's important for you to add musical information right from the beginning, because then you will have information enough for you yourself figure out what has to be done so you can improve your playing. Nice. So uh, there is also one technical issue that I must uh, give some attention here. Uh, we, it is important for you to damp and or mute the basses when there are changes of harmonies. Most of the piece, when you change harmony, you are playing uh, a, 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 some closed string. So you just lift the left hand and that's it. You are damped. But there are some few, a few examples where that doesn't happen. For example, uh, when it's the last chord from measure four and the first chord of measure fifth, five. So we have this A on the bass and then that E on the bass. It's important for you to play the E and then as fast as possible, just touch the fifth string lightly with, with your thumb. So, so then you can damp it. On the last measure as well, and it's a very similar challenge. You have an A, then you have to play the E, and then damp the A. Because if not, the chord will be confusing. Which chord? The Ah, now I get it, what chord it is. Okay, now I get it. So it's very important, so the harmony will be clear. And this kind of music, which has very simple harmony, it's very important that they are clear. Okay, I hope you will enjoy. We have been working hard on this new material for our technical course, which is similar as an intermediate level, and you are welcome to join us in this journey. 
Have fun.